it. He means this uh, analytic um, a term for a personification of the inherent intelligence within the intrinsic libido of the psyche. Libido, again, is the energy slash substance of the psyche, the way our reality is made of matter and energy in a physical sense. So, too, that's also true of the subjective world in Jung, classical Jungian thought. This inner world is composed of and, and made out of libido, in the same analog and analogous sense. Okay? So, so we're getting into this core of the uh, theory of libido right here. Very interesting. So, Jung formulated the concept of Eros as the secret operator of the transformations by which individuation occurs. Eros is a figure who guides this process and also appears as the Egyptian thought, the Greek Hermes, and the alchemical Mercurius. This is Eros Dioactus, and that's them again. I didn't say De Eros Dioactus. I just said Eros is teacher. And I said, no, you're going to do Eros Dioactus. So there's Eros Dioactus. So, you know. There's Eros Dioactus, Eros is teacher. For the Egyptians, this teaching figure was called the, quote, divine, quote, unquote, who guides the collaborative effort of spiritual self-realization. A person's cause was said, quote, arouses, unquote, a, quote, contagious joy, unquote, to seek and quote, that's a, er, a typo there, and quote, enjoy an immortal union, unquote, with the perfected Ka, a union of the human and divine. And this is what drives spiritual seeking. So we see it even back in the very first writings already, this idea that this is a man who wants to be fucked by God. And this is an analysis getting into the mechanism by which that occurs. Don't tell anyone. It's <laughs> they actually allowed this to be published since they have to do something with most of it. Right. The god thought, Tehuti an Egyptian, was alluded to be the child of Horus and Seth, the son of two fathers. He represented the quote fruit unquote of the sacred union of the great opposites, spiritual realization and knowledge. As such, Tehuti was considered the original shaman, the first alchemist, the first Gnostic, the alchemical initiate of the wisdom of God who is both the originator and product of the union with the Ka soul. The Ka, which is the, quote, personal, unquote, uh, approximation to the spirit of God, becomes the spiritual heart within the great lover who is God. Uh, by the way, my writing here is confused. I don't know if any of you pick up these details that are going to the questions and answers. I'm going to all these little details. Uh, my thinking went through a lot further differentiation after this discussion. And you should know that from a later vantage point, I see a lot of this discussion now that is still relevant, but some of it's still muddled, rather muddled. This is an example that mixing up the heart with the great lover, and it comes to inhabit the heart with the ka, it's kind of mushed in, I don't know the particulars now, but I gradually, to the bad phrase, straighten it out later on. Um, but it's kind of mushy, I just want to make an extra comment too. Likewise, I'm curious about chemical text is the cause and result of the operations which complete the opus. Isn't that nasty? And this is, by the way, all taken from Jung's Mysterium Conjunctionis, which is a very, very elaborate analysis of, of uh, alchemistic imagery. At the very core of it is, is this mystery. And I'm just spilling the beans here. You have to read all the way to this damn book. You know, find this out. <laughs> That's about this great magus, uh, transpersonal magus, Mercurius, who splits himself into these two elemental parts and then fucks himself royal. <laughs> 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 Likewise, the Mercurius of alchemical text is the cause and result of the operations which complete the opus. In fact, to perform the operation, Mercurius is, quote, quote, duplex, unquote, splits into an active and passive pack, called the king and the queen. This is great, by the way, for closet people cases. <laughs> Call the king and the queen. Is it, what gets away with it better than calling it the king and the queen? I mean, really, if you have to defend it, you know, and all that, and make a look at something else. Call the king and the queen and then combines to recreate himself on a more refined level. This is not, by the way, unique to this imagery. You'll find in all kinds of these sacred traditions, you know. So some of the magus or the questers suddenly seeing the sacred marriage scene or something like that, you know. And they always try and imply that there's certain identifying it in the proper way. But, you know, behind the curtains and no one's looking, I'm telling you, and every time it's the dirty way that no one ever would talk about. I mean, you think just fucking itself would be something you, of course, would not want to talk about. But I'm not talking mere sex. I'm talking the bad, bad stuff. The homo stuff. The queer stuff. No one is going to talk about it. I'm saying that's the way to go traditionally. And 
everyone owns it, and stupid Catholic priests in skirts are running around, and, and uh, it's an overt ownership of that. Well, no, 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 it's like a thousand years. No, 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 no. It's like, that's so ridiculous, right? So the great lover is God, but all this kind of. So there, oh, where was I? Likewise, the McCurse, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm get, getting giddy, because it, it is a great fundamental uh, reality to go dancing with the magic of what's called the image of the sacred marriage, which is the, the king queen pumping, basically, or pumping in the great pool of creation. Uh, it's, a, it's a fundamental image. It's the image that we could describe in many ways the creation of an individual, all of us come from this, uh, the creation of the universe. It's not an image of it being hetero. It's not an image of being hetero. In fact, one could argue that those who call themselves, or in modern terms, call themselves hetero, hetero-identified, uh, are unfortunately uh, only taking a very partial uh, view of things. And that's the problem with it. And so one could even look at Jung's you know, understanding for heterosexuals as really an attempt, an attempt to get heteros back on track. And to get them to come back to being homo. If you get well enough, if you're a man, and you're a straight man, and you get well enough, this is, I'm sorry, it's bounding on something further, but if you're a straight man and you get well enough integrated with your animal, technically speaking, uh, you kind of overthrow her ability to be this dominating, secretly inwardly dominating um, um, complex. Uh, instead, she becomes what's called kind of, you know, what's considered in terms of kind of ally. And they don't, you know, doesn't talk about this because you can't, again, it would make, it would make him, if he turned into looking like a beat face, this would be a, a tiny amount of his anxiety. He would keel over dead to, to say this. Uh, uh, but it's absolutely true. You make yourself into a woman for God. Mm -hmm. Jung found this out too. And that's what his psychology is about for straight men. You learn him to make yourself a woman for God. And I don't mean by that in any old way. I mean through this inner, and, and anima means your inner feltness. So it, it's not a nasty thing. And this is a very important thing to come into relationship with your inner feltness and appropriate for it. That's what relational anima means. You can see and understand that when you matter your sexual orientation, really, you know, so to speak. We all have that uh, ability to picture Prince of being a woman inside and want to come into a better relationship with her, so to speak. Uh, so we act by doing that. We don't, so to speak, have intercourse with her. We activate her relationship with the great, with this great image of dependency. Okay, <clears throat> so that's what this is all about. So my question is that the chemical text is the cause and result of the operations which complete the opus. In fact, to perform, perform the operations, Mercurius is quote duplex unquote splits into an active and passive half called the king and queen, and then combines to recreate himself on a more refined level. That is, Mercurius goes through a process of quote perfection unquote. Gained through the submission of his feminine half to the inseminating union of his masculine half. It follows that the basis for the alchemical combination, the, the figure of Hermaphroditus, was taken during the Middle Ages and Renaissance as an allusion to homosexuality. There is a woodcut in a Renaissance edition of this book, De Architectura, uh, 1511, showing the alchemist being inseminated by the quote masculine spirit unquote in an act of anal intercourse. Also, comma, the story of Zeus and Ganymede, comma, with all its implications of anal intercourse, that's again their fuck up way of screwing the language again, with all its implications of anal intercourse, comma, was used by alchemists as a, you know, they can't, anal intercourse is they printed this? This is why they couldn't put it even in the commas, they had screwed up the thing, and they left out the commas there. There's a bunch of commas in that sentence. That they're so nervous. Picture these people. <laughs> <laughs> it's not serious about this. It doesn't look like it has a dry bones now. Try to bring a little life back, why not? You know, right? Probably dead soon enough anyway, might as well. It's all over now, right? But the picture of them, they're, they're shitting in their pants. <laughs> over this. My God, you know, also the story of Zeus and Ganymede with all its implications of animal intercourse was used by alchemists as a motif to represent alchemical union and transformation. In fact, a scene of the alchemist writing on the eagle's back as Ganymede forms the title page illustration. And Andrea Lebavius, that's his name, by the way, that's another typo. That's not the title of the book, that's his name. Andrea Lebavius is the author. His book is Alchemia, Recognata and Octa, 1606. The, the, the alchemist writing on the eagle's back as Ganymede is the title page picture in that book. It's a giant compendium. And that's the alchemist writing on the eagle, it's the picture facing the title mm -hmm. page. Picture that. Mm -hmm. This is a direct illusion. <laughs> to this homosexual mystery in alchemy. 
That's outrageous. I mean, picture even at the time. I wonder they kept it underground mm -hmm. at the time, you know? So, you know, the Christians wanted to get rid of them. We got two out there in the opening and see why. You know, it was like the same thing when the Christians came to the new world, so the Indians were running around with each other and stuff like that. And the it's the same problem. You see the same historical issues because it's numinous. That's so almost stuff. You know, I mean, Henry reading's numinous too. Of course, reading babies is magical. You know, but then picture something that, that at least is magical. We would say at least. You know, it gets better from there. But at least is magical. <laughs> it's just as magical as reading babies. Imagine it's just as magical as reading babies. But that's not reading any literal babies. But it's just as procreative. That's homogenitivity. We all endowed with it. Even. Non gays or everyone, it's universal, we have other almost than us, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, but nonetheless, I mean, just imagine this is the great, a great source of, 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 of what it means to be human and become human in such a fascinating way that all of humanity is so um, uh, uh, reliant on in this great history and yet it's so in denial about it. You see, readers don't like what's not them. They really don't. They have these bizarre attitudes based on mass identity and you know, the literalness of breathing if we can get into the ideology of that and why that's so. But here, this article, as you see, is trying to uh, reconnect in a Jungian form with an alternate ideology, an ideology based on a homo attitude, a homo procreative attitude of the libido, to be a little more technical in Jungian terms, rather than a hetero attitude of the libido. And, and just to get touch you know, on this, as you can imagine, this all could be developed much further. I'll finish the last couple of paragraphs. Two more paragraphs. As such motifs show, the twinship union was seen as procreatively potent, a form of generation in its own right. Otto Rank was the first psychologist to identify, quote, the self-creative tendency symbolized in the magic meaning of twinship, as the twins appear to have created themselves independently of natural procreation, by which he means breeding, so they were believed to be able to create things which formerly did not exist, unquote. Huh? Well, I don't think men like him, when they wrote these things and they published them, knew what they were saying in the back then. It was an odd time when the labels we have now just began to take hold. You know, they still write like this. People were on stage and did sh uh, also wrote things. And also early movies are like this too. You see an odd naivete around what later you can't do anymore around homosexual themes. And this is another example. That's Otto Rank. This is 1914. You can write like this. You can't write like this now. Or, you know, in the last uh, several decades, you can't write like that. But you could back then, right? So it's odd to see that, um, him discuss that. Uh, as the twins appear to have created themselves independently of natural procreation, so they were believed to be able to create things which formerly did not exist, unquote. The twinship union has a, quote, inherent creative power, unquote, making the twins, quote, notice how I modified this phrase, independent of heterosexual procreation. See this phrase, independent of sexual procreation. But he doesn't mean that. You know, we have to, right now, I'm, I'm contextualizing, and they allowed that in. I was really wondering why they'd allow that heterosexual in brackets in there. I was really questioning that, because that was, that's another point. The whole article is full of these pushy things. You don't know it now, or outside the context of it. But that's an example of that. I'm taking Otto Rump, okay, who's saying that the twins operate outside sexual activity. That's what he was saying. But he meant heterosexual activity. He, he didn't mean to include things that he wouldn't talk about. Because you don't talk about those things anyway. So when he meant the word sexual activity, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that it has to be interpreted. And the proper interpretation is outside of heterosexual activity. They left that in. And I thought that was very daring of them to do that. Uh, uh, even though they screwed up so many other things. Right? So there it is, independent of heterosexual procreation. Because you see what I'm doing here is I'm claiming a valid position for a gay viewpoint in Jungian thought. No one's ever tried that. 